Firefly Aerospace announced that during a routine test at their facility in Briggs, Texas, the first stage booster for its Alpha Flight 7 rocket was destroyed. The explosion occurred during pre-flight testing, not during an actual launch, but the effects are just as serious. Thankfully, Firefly says all safety protocols were followed and no personnel were harmed. From its rebirth after bankruptcy to lunar landings, Firefly has been trying to punch above its weight. The company's Alpha rocket is designed to compete in the small to medium launch segment, offering a lower cost alternative for satellites bound for low Earth orbit or sun synchronous orbits. Firefly's advertised price for Alpha is around $15 million per launch. Aggressive when you compare that to many other launchers. In 2025, Firefly also achieved what many would call a landmark. Its Blue Ghost lunar lander made a soft landing on the moon, becoming the first fully commercial mission to succeed in that feat. That lunar success gave Firefly credibility beyond just launch services. It signaled that they weren't just building rockets, but aiming for deep space capabilities. In their trajectory, Firefly seemed to be accelerating faster than some expected. They secured a contract worth over $176 million for a future South Pole mission. But here's where the fragility shows. Before the testing explosion, Firefly's Alpha rocket already had a mixed track record. In April 2025, the sixth Alpha flight failed. The upper stage engine nozzle detached mid-flight, reducing thrust and sending the payload into a lower-than-planned orbit. As a result, the satellite and rocket re-entered safely into the Pacific Ocean. But the mission was a loss. That failure was not isolated. By one count, four of six Alpha flights since its first launches in 2021 had experienced some kind of failure. Now with the booster loss during ground testing, Firefly's ambitions are being tested. Launch 7 is likely delayed or canceled. Despite all these failures and challenges, Firefly is still performing far better than other, far more experienced companies like Blue Origin. On paper, Blue Origin should have been years ahead. Bezos has openly said that he sells about a billion dollars worth of Amazon stock every year to fund Blue Origin. That's a level of financial backing most aerospace startups could only dream of. And yet with all that money, their track record in actual launches is shockingly thin. Take their orbital rocket, New Glenn. It has been in development since 2012, with promises of a first flight years ago. But here we are in 2025 and New Glenn still hasn't flown once. Meanwhile, Firefly, a company that went bankrupt, restarted, and operates with a fraction of Blue Origin's resources, has already launched its Alpha rocket six times, landed a spacecraft on the moon, and secured major contracts with NASA. Even their smaller suborbital New Shepard system tells the same story. Yes, it has carried a few space tourists past the Karman line, including Jeff Bezos himself. But those flights are short hops, not orbital missions, not satellite launches, not the kind of sustained operations that actually push the space economy forward. By contrast, Firefly's Alpha has already deployed payloads for commercial customers and defense contractors, even if some missions ended in failure. The difference is that Firefly is trying, launching, and improving, while Blue Origin is still stuck in development. This isn't to say Blue Origin has no future. They are still building powerful engines like the BE-4, which even United Launch Alliance depends on for its Vulcan rocket. But it shows that resources alone don't guarantee results. If they did, Blue Origin would be launching dozens of missions a year by now. Instead, they've fallen behind not only SpaceX, but also scrappy players like Firefly and Rocket Lab, companies forced to innovate to survive. For those of you who don't know, both SpaceX and Blue Origin, along with Boeing, were funded early on by NASA programs designed to develop commercial spacecraft. Back in 2010, NASA launched the Commercial Crew Development Program handing out hundreds of millions of dollars to private companies to help build the next generation of crew vehicles to the International Space Station. SpaceX received about $396 million in the early rounds. Blue Origin got around $25 million, and Boeing got far more than anyone, more than $4.8 billion over the years, dwarfing the others. The idea was simple. 
By investing in multiple companies, NASA would end up with two or three reliable spacecraft, reducing America's dependence on Russia's Soyuz. And what happened? SpaceX delivered. By 2020, the Crew Dragon spacecraft had launched astronauts safely to the International Space Station, and it has been flying regular crew rotations ever since. Ever since then, SpaceX has kept increasing both the frequency and reliability of its launches. In 2023, SpaceX flew 98 orbital missions, setting a new personal record at the time. Then, in 2024, they broke that record again, launching 134 Falcon missions, more than half of all orbital launches globally that year. That's astonishing growth, nearly a 37% jump in just one year. And now, in 2025, they're not slowing down. Their target is ambitious. According to SpaceX Now data, as of mid-2025, they've already achieved 125 out of 128 scheduled launches toward a full-year goal. Their cadence is crushing past old expectations, with dozens of successful missions stacking up month after month. Blue Origin, on the other hand, never even produced an orbital crew capsule. Despite the early funding, they stuck to developing New Shepard for suborbital tourism flights. It was supposed to be a stepping stone, but more than a decade later, there's still no orbital system from Blue Origin. Billions poured in privately from Jeff Bezos, yet they remain years away from flying a single astronaut into orbit. And then there's Boeing. With all their experience and NASA's massive investment, Boeing was expected to be the safe bet. Their Starliner was supposed to be ready for crew flights by 2017. Instead, it became the most delayed and problematic program in the history of commercial crew. Test flights in 2019 and 2022 both ran into major software and valve issues. Then, in 2024, the long-awaited first crewed mission stranded two astronauts on the International Space Station because of multiple failures. What was supposed to be a short test turned into a six-month emergency stay until SpaceX's Crew Dragon was sent to bring them home. In the process, Boeing burned through an extra $1.5 billion of its own money just to keep the program alive, on top of the nearly $5 billion NASA had already provided. Even now, Starliner has yet to complete a fully successful crew rotation. Out of the three companies, Boeing had the most resources the most experience, and the biggest contract. Yet it delivered the least. What's insane about all of this is that NASA still hasn't dropped Boeing's Starliner program. Despite years of delays, billions in extra spending, and repeated failures, Boeing is still under contract to keep developing the capsule. And the reason for that is clear. Lobbying. Boeing isn't just an aerospace company. It's one of the most powerful government contractors in the United States. Over the years, Boeing has spent tens of millions of dollars every single year lobbying Congress and government agencies. In 2023 alone, they spent over $13 million on lobbying. So when you compare them side by side, the picture becomes clear. SpaceX took the funding and delivered exactly what NASA asked for, on time, and with constant improvements. Blue Origin turned their funding into a detour for space tourism and endless delays. And Boeing, with more money than both combined, turned its project into a symbol of failure and waste. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.